Thank you. The gentleman's time has expired. I now recognize the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Scott, for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Governor Bernard, let me start with you. In recent weeks, the Fed has had to take extraordinary steps to maintain liquidity in short-term debt markets and repo markets, including the actions of the New York Fed earlier this week. It injected almost $50 billion for overnight repurchase agreements or repo to relieve funding pressure in money markets. The last time that this happened was back in 2008, as you probably know, during the financial crisis. Why is this happening now? Well, thank you for uh, your question. Uh, so uh, we certainly um, uh, recognize uh, that uh, we uh, have um, uh, important uh, pipes in the short-term money markets, which uh, the repo market is part of, and we want to make sure there's ample liquidity so that we don't see these kinds of frictions. Um, and it's important to understand uh, exactly uh, where these frictions uh, are arising. Now, we did uh, anticipate, uh, market participants did anticipate that there would be um, Increased need for repo. Uh, well, let me let me ask you this: If we go on, what are the risks? That's what I'm after. What are the risks to our financial institutions that uh, they may become unwilling to lend to each other, as happened in 2008? Yeah. So. Um, from what uh, our market um, discussions and surveys are able to tell, this is a very different episode, a different set of uh, frictions uh, than in 2007, 2008. 2007, 2008, we had counterparties pulling away from each other because there was concerns about the underlying quality of collateral and the creditworthiness of those counterparties. Today, we're in a different environment, and we believe uh, that what we saw was a, a simple imbalance uh, between uh, those who are willing to supply and those who needed to finance repo. Um, I believe that uh, we have said, the committee has said, that we are uh, operating in an ample reserves regime. And it may simply be that we are close to uh, the uh, lowest level of reserves that um, are necessary for the conduct of monetary policy. But the kind of intervention that the New York Fed took, that is a pretty standard uh, open market operation. And, you know, my own inclination would be to look at mechanisms like allowing the balance sheet to continue organic growth in order to make sure there is enough reserves in the system so we don't see those kinds of frictions. Okay, now, all of this is happening at the same time that there is an upcoming transition from LIBOR to what could be SOFR. Now, um, I think that this poses one of the greatest potential disruptions to our financial system ever. And this is why, uncertainty, uncertainty. It has a large part to play in how smoothly this transition plays out. We're talking about $400 trillion in contracts worldwide, $200 trillion in contracts here in this massive change between these benchmark rates. Um, and so, we're after a smooth transition in terms of how this new reference weight will perform, and particularly with what we call these uh, transition leg legacy contracts. <clears throat> so are you concerned about this volatility uh, and how it may add to the uncertainty associated with this rate change? This is. This is a big issue. Can you explain it to us and understand and share with me and the audience and C-SPAN how serious this issue is? 
Well, thank you. So I think the uh, transition away from uh, the reference rate that was shown to be subject to manipulation um, and is becoming increasingly um, fragile uh, as fewer participants uh, provide input into that rate, um, that transition to a more market-based rate uh, that is going to be more resilient and not subject to manipulation is a very important transition. Um, and it is a transition that I think we should all be paying uh, a lot of attention to. And financial institutions um, uh, uh, prime among uh, those who should be paying attention. Let Thank me you. The, the gentleman's time has expired. I now recognize the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Posey, for five minutes.